It's been months since I wanted to make this video. I've been wanting to make it since It's Gotta Be Perfect came out, but finally, I now have the time to sit down and make a video about this topic. There's no other way for me to say this other than to just say it, so... I'm not watching SMG4 anymore. I mean, hey, that sounds pretty bad to say on a channel that was literally built on top of the series, but please, because I put around over 100 hours into this channel to construct mountains of videos and theories about the series that so many people have enjoyed, I beg of you to please watch this video and listen to what I have to say. This video was originally going to be a well-edited video, but as I continued writing the script for this video and it got longer and longer, I realized that I won't have time to edit it, so I decided to do it podcast style. Also, this video is going to be separated into two parts. The first part is giving proper criticism towards the show, and the second part is why I'm leaving SMG4. Anyway, now that around 50% of you are still here. As my final video on anything SMG4 related, I'm here today to give one last ounce of criticism towards the show because my god, it needs it. I should say that this is of no offense to anyone working on the show. Everyone that works at Glitch Productions are actually the nicest people in the world. In fact, the ones that I've interacted with, which I think is about four-ish at this point, we're all truly amazing individuals. Just because the people working on the show are truly great people and work really hard on the stuff they do, I have to give criticism where criticism is due. Because I'm just like the people working on the show. I want the show to succeed, so don't take this amount of criticism as a bad thing, take it as a good thing. This is a good thing because if anyone from Glitch is watching this, they can take this video and push it into the series to make the series better. Main things I'm going to be critiquing in this video is the two movies, It's Gotta Be Perfect and Western Spaghetti, and the new castle that was revealed around a month ago at this point. Let's begin, starting off with It's Gotta Be Perfect. I didn't enjoy this movie for a variety of reasons. It just felt like the latter half of the 10 year anniversary again. So like, imagine the fight scene from the 10 year anniversary special, you know, the one outside of the castle and just stretch it out for 45 minutes. That's what this movie felt like. That might be a bit of an exaggeration. My main point I'm trying to make is that everything that happened here is stuff we've already seen before. Put it simply, it's boring. We've seen these concepts reused tons of times already, and the character development here is literally a repeat of character development that has already happened. The only takeaway from this movie is that the castle has to be buried, which feels like it was only done to have something big happen at the end of the movie, which I'll get into more when I go to the castle portion of this video. But I digress. My main problem in this movie is with the characters. As I said, the character development is repeated from before and the main characters used here are the same characters that we have seen be used over and over and over. You know how Dragon Ball Super is nicknamed the Goku and Vegeta show because of their focus on them and literally nobody else? Well, SMG4 might as well be called the Mario SMG4, Meggy, and sometimes SMG3 show because those are all the characters that ever get development. And when they do get development, it's recycled from previous events in the series, which I don't know why I'm critiquing that because any development these characters get are going to be tossed away after the movie and or arc is over. And it's not like this problem was fixed after this movie either. Western Spaghetti also had this exact same problem. Now Western Spaghetti, don't get me wrong, I actually really like. This movie was so good that I would argue that it's on par if not better than 10 year anniversary, but it does have a lot of problems, again, with the characters. I remember last year I stated that the writers had no idea what to do with Maggie, and this movie completely proves it. The events leading up to this movie finish Maggie's college arc, which the series forgot about until the events leading up to this movie. During Maggie's Splatfest character arc, it was clear that her character had one direction and one direction only. Win Splatfest, and it was done pretty good. And then after that, she had a new career direction of being a police officer, and then the series just scrapped that entirely which I get it. There was a lot of police stuff in the real world happening around that time, so I think you can excuse it, especially if you didn't write into it that much. But then her spinoff series literally had her as a police officer-like person. And that was for the majority of the series. It was to the point where it felt like it was building up to the fact that she was going into some sort of police officer position, but nope. After the series was over, she said she wanted to be a sports trainer, which the spinoff series had nothing to do with. So they spend half of the Revelations arc building up Meggie to be a sports trainer, forget about it, have her become a lawyer as her new character direction for a brief moment, and then bring up the sports trainer thing again with Western Spaghetti. And even then, is this sports training? Is training Tari specifically to be less scared? How is that sports training? It's not. This felt like it was brought up only to wrap up a character arc that had no direction. And sure, you know, you could argue that the movie had Meggie coaching Tari. Well, for one, how is coaching Tari about sports? And for two, if the sports trainer stuff never happened, this movie would be the exact 
Same. Watch this movie while thinking that Maggie never went to college and it's still watchable without problems. Sure, she says she's coaching Tari at times, but you can replace that with it being her simply growing her friendship with Tari. Speaking of Tari, why is Tari the secondary character in this movie? Why is Maggie in the spotlight again? Don't get me wrong, I am extremely happy Tari finally has new developments since Swatfi 2018, but for a character that needed development the most out of anyone in the main cast, why would Meggie, the person that has had the same development repeated over and over and doesn't need it, be the main character receiving the most development here? This movie, in my opinion, would have worked better if the plot wasn't revolved around Meggie and Tari was actually the main character. I'm sure your next thought is, okay, well, what about One Shot Ren? The entire plot is based around Meggie because it's a plot about Meggie. It wouldn't work with Tari. Then, Write a different story. I'm not saying this story was bad, but Tari seriously needed a lot more development than what she got in this movie. Yes, she got development. That makes me extremely happy. But Tari needed more and Meggie needed less. Have Meggie be a supporting character to Tari, who is the main person having a problem, not the other way around. And of course, it's not like any of this development was worth anything anyway, because right after this movie ended, the next episode, everything gets reset like it always does. Don't believe me? In the new Castle episode, there's this scene where Tari and Luigi get sent to like this supply closet thing, and the scene has an entire gag about how easily scared those two are. So you know, Tari went on this pretty big character arc in the movie about becoming braver and less scared, and a few episodes later, she's acting scared the same way she always been. Like imagine the scene if Western Spaghetti didn't exist. It would be the exact same. But since we're on the topic of castles, let's talk about the new castle and how much of a letdown this entire event is. So since like, it's gotta be perfect, they've been hyping up this new castle pretty much for months. And you know, the castle's fine. It looks great. It looks really well done. And it looks like they spent a lot of time on modeling it and shaping it in a way that fans would love. However, the question that remains in my head is why? Why did they have to redesign the castle? Sure, you can make the argument that SMG4 said this is meant to be a brand new era of SMG4, that this castle is to represent a fresh start for the series. Okay, well, then why was the next episode directly after this one, Mario reacts to Nintendo Memes 14? A video that isn't new or unique and doesn't require anything that the series set up after the new castle was built. In fact, that goes for the entirety of the SMG4 crew series. Every episode of SMG4 Crew so far feels like it's just more Mario does things. Which leads me to ask my next question. What is SMG4's crew? Why does SMG4's crew need to exist? I know the reason it exists. The reason that SMG4's crew exists now along with this new castle is because the series is pretending that all these changes are massive to the series when in reality, it's the exact same writing the series has always had prior. I mean, look at not just SMG4's crew, look at every episode that has come out since the new castle appeared. None of the episodes feel like they're fresh, unique, present a change in writing, or a new era of the series. Okay, so sure, the new castle doesn't represent a new era. Maybe there's another reason for this new castle to exist. I mean, obviously they had to build a new castle because they had to sink the other one. Okay, that makes sense. So let me ask this new question. Why did they have to sink the castle? Oh, it's because of the demon keyboard. Okay, cool. Why does the demon keyboard exist? For the plot of the movie? Okay, well why does the movie exist? Is there any legitimate reason this movie needed to exist other than to hype up a new antagonist and a mysterious plot, which by the way, the series completely forgets about after the plot moves forward. And no, this isn't a problem with this year. This has been a consistent problem for so long in SMG Force history. Every episode in between arcs and movies feel like Filler. They're just episodes that exist for the sole purpose of getting an episode out every Saturday. The movies and arcs feel like they push the plot forward, but going back to my point before, after they're over, the series just forgets about them and moves on to an SMG4 episode where Mario shits in a toilet. It's as Kevin said in 2019 himself, they need to create episodic episodes where plot is progressing and where characters are still developing. Sure, there's been a tad bit of episodes here and there, but for the series to not feel so constrained, they need to provide less filler. Anyway, going back to the new castle and using the context I just described, the only reason this castle exists is because they feel the need to enact a visual change to the series every single time they do something significant. They do visual changes because otherwise the show would just forget development characters have gone through. This was a problem back in the lawsuit arc where you can essentially write this entire arc out of the show and it would make no difference whatsoever. The arc is essentially filler. But of course you can't do that because of the visual changes the cast members went through. 
Now, I can't put a say on it's gotta be perfect yet because the story obviously has yet to be completed, but I can almost guarantee that you can write it's gotta be perfect out of the show and there would be no differences. But you can't do that because of the castle redesign. Now, do the same thing for Western Spaghetti. The movie made no visual changes to the overall story and now try to imagine the show without the Western Spaghetti movie. There would be no differences at all because the series didn't force a visual change on everyone. Imagine if in Avatar The Last Airbender, at the end of book two, Aang's tattoos just became purple for no reason other than that the finale of book two took place. Which if we're bringing that up, you can make the argument that, you know, Zuko has his scars and that's a visual change. While yes, you're correct, that visual change actually means something. SMG4 makes visual changes and none of them mean anything other than for the sake of change. Ironically enough, I think the most controversial visual change they've done is probably the best one out of the entire series, and that was turning Meggie from an inkling into a human. That visual change actually represents something else other than the sake of applying a visual change for the sake of change and nothing more. That human form represents the loss of her rival Desti and the challenges she's meant to face in the future, and the massive character development she is going to have to receive forward. Now what does SMG 4's redesign represent? That's what I thought. By the way, I think I've talked about everything I needed to talk about for criticism, so let's talk about why I left SMG4. I'm sure you've noticed that this channel hasn't been very active since It's Gotta Be Perfect came out. I mean, there's been so many new developments in the series since I left that were honestly really exciting. I mean, I can count a total of two on my finger since I left. I believe I owe you an explanation as to why this channel hasn't been active in so long and why I'm not watching the series anymore. Let's go back to the release of It's Gotta Be Perfect. That entire build up and plot of the movie, as I expressed in my videos, was really really eye-opening to me about the stresses of content creation. And no, I'm not about to go into why I quit YouTube, but the way that story was structured, regardless of the contents in its plot, made me realize that making a YouTube channel on SMG4 is really not that great of an idea. So if you don't know, I was actually the very first YouTube channel that was made revolving around SMG4 lore, and ever since the launch of this channel, when any new developments would happen in the series, I would try my hardest to get a new theory going and release a video within one or two days, and by the end of the Revelations arc, I was releasing those theory videos on the day the SMG4 ones came out. Which means I had to come up with a theory, script it, record it, download and find footage, which by the way took up about 97 gigabytes of storage on my hard drive, and then edit that footage down, upload it, type out the metadata, and create a clickable thumbnail. All of that, which typically would take days to weeks to months or on any normal video, I was doing that within a few hours of the release of an SMG4 video, which was really stressful. Not only that, I had another channel to take care of, which is where I'm currently uploading to now, that I had to give attention to it so it wouldn't die. And sometimes I would even upload multiple theory videos a week on top of that. So overall, it was a pretty stressful channel to take care of, but that doesn't mean it wasn't fun. I remember the reveals of Niles being zero and how I was so excited that I had actually predicted it. I remember working on Genesis of Bridge with my friend and voice acting in different scenes, but while there was clearly fun to be had, all of this was extremely stressful for the reasons I had provided. Which leads us to It's Gotta Be Perfect, which made me realize how horrible it is to run a channel based on SMG4. SMG4 just likes pumping out random comedic videos throughout the year and then out of nowhere will drop a video that's clearly meant to build up something, like the date for It's Gotta Be Perfect, which just so happened to be on my sister's birthday. So the events leading up to the It's Gotta Be Perfect movie were actually really stressful to me. My main channel at the time was actually not doing very well, so I was trying to shift a lot of focus onto my main channel, which was super poorly timed because SMG4 just dropped all this lore stuff with It's Gotta Be Perfect, and I needed to cover that content or else this channel would die alongside my main channel. It was hell where I was working like 12 hours a day just to keep these channels afloat and wouldn't you know it SMG4 drops the it's gotta be perfect date right on my sister's birthday so I was working really hard the days leading up to my sister's birthday so I could go out and celebrate it with her without the stress of working however I then realized that once that movie date had dropped that most of my efforts were pretty much in vain I remember that my sister was really upset with me once I told her that this issue had come up and made me upset as well because I was extremely stressed that the date had to land on such an important day I should clarify that I'm not blaming SMG4 for doing the date he did there's no actual way he would have known it. it was my sister's birthday I'm just trying to explain the poor timing now obviously 
obviously I'm not going to put SMG4 over my sister's birthday. So my sister and I struck a deal. She delayed her birthday celebration by one hour from its initial start, which gave me around 45 minutes to watch the movie and another hour and 15 minutes to create a theory video on it. And that was probably the most stressful two hours in the history of my career. I remember throwing up consistently the night before over how bad my anxiety ended up being about this. I remember that I didn't even want to look at or hear the words SMG4 because of how stressed I was. And there wasn't even that much to discuss about the movie after it premiered. From this point onward, I sat down and I said, I'm done. <laughs> Of course, that, at the time, that didn't get me to stop watching the series, far from it. I believed at this point that not having my job based around SMG4 would actually increase my enjoyment of the series. Considering at this point in time, the last big thing was the lawsuit arc and it was garbage. And this movie wasn't all that great either to me. So I really thought it was the stress of my job that was weighing my opinion on the series. So taking all these factors into consideration, I decided to just quit the second channel. Days after the movie came out, I remember vending to my friends that it was so stressful to do this as a job because you never know when SMG4 is going to drop something. One episode, it can be Mario shitting in the toilet, and the next episode, it can be a universe ending threat, and the comedic episodes aren't even enjoyable to watch, but I had to watch them to make sure nothing happens. But either way, I decided to completely quit this channel and just focus on my main channel, which funnily enough, when Western Spaghetti came out, I was once again in a similar problem that I didn't even have a choice to quit this channel if I wanted to. You know what I was doing when Western Spaghetti came out? Laying in bed, extremely sick, without a voice. Yeah, I was extremely sick when that movie came out. So even if I wanted to make any videos on this movie, I ended up being sick anyway. And I also had a sponsor do that week on my main channel that luckily they gave me more time to complete it. Uh, that's why I quit the second channel. My criticisms towards the series is why I quit watching the series altogether. So thank you for watching this rant. Hopefully the 5% of you watching at this point actually did enjoy it. Thank you for 12,000 subscribers. When Watfi inevitably comes out this year, I'll probably have an AI rewrite it regardless because it's funny. See you then, I guess. That will probably be the next time I upload, so.